Um, Brett Naylor is one of the lead developers of OpenMDO. He's been on the project longer than me, so. <laughs> well, he is old, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> um, I think there are some folks in the room who've used NPSS. If you have, Brett was the lead developer of NPSS. Um, so don't ask him any NPSS questions. He can't remember anything that far back. Um, but you know, he he wrote his own interpreted language for NPSS kind of before Python was really a thing. So he's definitely got the cred to be up on stage. The, for the most part, OpenMDO development team members can work on different parts of the framework, although each one does specialize a little bit. Uh, Brett works a lot on the core software architecture, like the software engineering, software architecture design, and also on the data transfer part of things. So all your MPI bugs are Brett's fault. Um, it also means that whenever you guys forward models to me with particularly nasty bugs that have to do with like data transfer, I usually end up forwarding them to Brett. So. Uh, I think Brett's going to show you what honestly are a set of tools that he developed out of like a need to contain the crazy that I was shoveling his way, but, um, but we think will be useful to you as well. <clears throat> okay, so as Justin said, I'm going to go through uh, several of our, our, our command line tools. Um, certain ones like the N squared and the meta model viewer are going to be talked oh, about sorry, by... That doesn't <clears throat> help the internet. Okay. Uh, certain, certain ones uh, like the N squared and the meta model view are going to be talked about uh, by other people uh, later. So I'm going to talk about the rest. Um, so basically, all of our command line tools are subcommands of the OpenMDAO command. Um, so if you run that with the dash H, you'll get um, a list. Oh, it's having uh, problems with the, with the wireless. Um, anyway, you'll get a list of the uh, available subcommands and a short description of all of them. Um, the first one I'm going to look at. Oops. This is installed when you install OpenMDO. How many people even knew that the OpenMDO subcommand existed? Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, the first subcommand I'm going to look at is view uh, connections. Um, also, um, um, so on any subcommand, if you give it a dash H, it'll give you the arguments that that subcommand is expecting. Um, so I'm going to run this on the a propulsor model. Uh, it's one of the Pi cycle examples. Um, oops. Oh, now we're losing the bottom part. I need to make it small enough to see the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> so what this gives you is a uh, a table where each uh, each row represents either a connection or an unconnected input or an unconnected output. Um, uh, each, uh, each of the columns is uh, hideable. Um, it is filterable uh, using simple substring filtering, and it's also sortable. Um, and by default, you only see the promoted input and output names. Um, but you can show the absolute names by toggling these guys down here. Um, so what I think this is good for uh, is a few things. One is uh, determining uh, unit conversion problems. Um, two is uh, detecting uh, unconnected inputs. And third is... Um, determining or finding problems with uh, promoted variables. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to the absolute input column, which I made visible by toggling this guy down here. And I'm going to just look at 
just the fan. Okay, so these are all so these are all the inputs only to the fan. Um, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to sort the promoted inputs, and what that's going to do is any any inputs that are promoted to the same name are implicitly connected. And um, so you can look at this and say, okay, like for example, design fan real flow dot t. I see three of those, and so is that what I expect uh, based on my my uh, promotion? Uh, the promotions that I specified, do I expect three or not? So that can help you uh, detect certain kinds of problems. Um, also, uh, unit conversions are shown in red. Um, you'll, you'll see that if you do a conversion or if you have units on one side and no units on the other side, it'll also, sh also show that um, in red because that could indicate potentially a problem. Um, Okay, and so the other thing, uh, the other thing you might want to do is to, is is to find uh, unconnected uh, inputs. So to find unconnected inputs, you look for the string no connection on the output side, um, and and we happen to it happen it happens to be surrounded uh, by square brackets, so you can just use that as a shortcut. Um, so so these are the unconnected. Uh, inputs to the fan. Um, and I'll go ahead and hide the absolute ones, but well, no, I'll show them again. Anyway, so uh, it can be useful. Um, you know, you can use the filtering to, to zero in on any particular part of the model that you that you want to zero in on. Okay, so that's that's view connections. Um, Now I'm going to look at OpenMDAO check. Okay, so what this is is kind of like a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a linter for your model. So we go through a bunch of checks that may or may not indicate problems. Um, down here, when you do the help, um, this shows you the set of default checks that we do, these guys, and there's some other ones available as well. Um, probably over time, we'll be adding more to, more checks to this. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned. Um, so I'm going to run this on, uh, on the propulsor again with just the default set of checks. And this is kind of... Hard to see because it's so big, but um, so this guy has uh, a couple of uh, inputs connected to the same source uh, on the same component, and it also has uh, no recorders defined, and most importantly, it, it has uh, components that are executing out of order, which is something you want to avoid generally. Um, you can also run individual checks. Brett's, uh, Brett's being generous. This is this is legitimately a model in the PySQL repository that I put together and that I didn't run check on, and so I mistakenly had an out of order execution in my model. <laughs> um, so you can also run individual checks, like you could run the out of order check, or you know look for cycles or whatever uh, so you can mix and match those however you however you want um, so that's check okay next I'm gonna look at yes open MDO does not the current version does not yeah, automatically can... order the components we we have a story in to do that so it hasn't so this so we used to do that um, and then uh, we found out that so like automatic ordering sounds like a great idea, but it's also an NP complete problem. Um, and so the algorithms that we put in kind of worked for simple cases, but then broke down for more difficult cases. And I determined at the time when we wrote V2 that it was better not to have a sort of working automatic ordering than to put something in that didn't always work. Um, so from an API standpoint, 
we kind of had to figure out a way to make it so you can turn it on and off. That wasn't the case before. So it, it hasn't made its way back into V2 yet because it's a very mathematically hard problem to solve. And so there's some API development that needs to happen. And we, we just haven't, hasn't risen to the top of the pile yet. It does, or you can manually set the order. There's a set order call you can you can make to change it. But yeah. All right. The next command I'm going to look at is uh, the xdsm command, which will generate an xdsm diagram for you of your of your model. There's quite a few options there. Um, Oh, and I want to, before I forget, I want to thank uh, Peter Anodi. Is that, is that, am I saying that right? <laughs> and uh, Remy Lafarge for uh, contributing uh, the code that's used in that. Uh, so there's your XDSM diagram of this. This is just a really simple, simple model. Uh, okay, total coloring. Okay, so what, what this will do is it will um, compute the sparsity pattern of your total Jacobian and it'll compute a coloring for you. Um, so I'm gonna run that on this simple model. You, you may or may not know what coloring is, but suffice it to say it's magic juju that makes your optimizations go faster, if it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm not going to run it on the propulsor because the propulsor doesn't have any design variables or anything defined, so you, there is no total color. Okay. Um, and that just, there's a little coloring viewer we have, which probably from, for most users is not of any interest, but um, if you're a developer and you have coloring problems or whatever and you want to look, to see what coloring uh, we're, we're picking. Uh, this viewer will, will show that to you. Um, and you can, you can click on it. This is, this is using Matplotlib. I think we're probably going to rewrite this using Bokeh or something. But uh, currently, uh, it outputs the, uh, the variables that are, involved, you know, that are found in each of these subject copians. So I, I'm not sure everybody knows what they're looking at here. but. This is literally a, a graphical depiction of the total derivative Jacobian that the optimizer would see. And the gray stuff is, well, the, the alternating gray blocks are different subjects, so like different, you know, of and with respect to variables, some of which are vectorized. And then the different colors are literally like very, uh, derivatives that OpenMDO will solve for simultaneously. So everything that's green will be solved for together. Everything that's blue will be solved for together. You see there's five forward colors and zero reverse colors, but OpenMDO will automatically, like, for this problem, it was pure forward was the fastest, but it'll automatically figure out, like, forward and reverse balance and, and solve some adjoints and some direct solves. Yeah, I think when we, maybe when we redo this using Bokeh, we'll make it a little, uh, a little user friendlier. Yeah. I think we're at, I'm pretty sure these Um, when you when you run that, um, so that coloring gets written to a file um, called totalcoloring.pkl, which is just a pickle pickle file of our, of our coloring object, and you can use that uh, on subsequent uh, runs of your model if you if you set it up to to use a static coloring. Um, yeah, and I guess I'm not going to talk any more about coloring, but you're probably going to talk about that some tomorrow, Rob, maybe. All right. Um, there's also a view coloring command to view an existing coloring. I'm not going to sh bother showing that one. Um, okay. Now this one's probably not going to work. Uh, well, let's do. I'll do summary first. Uh, we have a summary command that. Um, 
I use, uh, when somebody gives me a model and I don't know anything about it, it just gives me a very, just a high level idea of what the thing looks like uh, in terms of like the sizes and, uh, you know, how deep the hierarchy is and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, so how many groups, components, uh, how many input and output variables, how many different kinds of linear and nonlinear solvers and what kind of driver. Um, I'm going to try iProf, but I have a feeling it's not going to work because of this socket issue I have here. But oh, it does work. Okay. <clears throat> so, so what iProf is? It's it's we call it an instance-based profiler. It's kind of okay. So with a normal profiler. It breaks things down by function call, but you don't know what instance, you know, like what component in your model or what uh, solver those function calls are associated with. So this breaks it down by by the instance. Um, and so, for example, um, oh, and by the way, this so each each row in this is the amount of that's the amount of time taken by that particular call, and then uh, the things below it. Or how you know the the functions that are called by that guy, uh, you know how the timing breaks down uh, among them. Um, so in in this one, for example, if you look at this second row here, okay. So this first this first block here is the um, it's the solve nonlinear for the design.fc group, and then here's this this one is the solve nonlinear for the nozzle. And this one is for the fan. And this is for the inlet. So it just kind of gives you, you know, and you can zoom in if you click on, you know, if you click on one of these, you can zoom down uh, to see more, see more detail. And then to get to the back to the top, you just hit uh, reset. <clears throat> uh, let's see. How much time do I have? Plenty of time. <clears throat> okay. Um, Okay. All right. Uh, so next, um, we'll look at OpenMVAO mem. Uh, it's it's a little memory profiler. Um, we'll do this for the propulsor again. The dash t to put it in tree format. This takes a little bit. <clears throat> this this particular yeah, this particular thing is only looking at Basically, all it's doing is it's looking at the memory before a particular function call and, and after, yeah, yeah. and it adds them up. The question uh, was, does this account properly for memory being allocated by like wrapped compiled code, Fortran, Cython, C? It does. I mean, it, it, it yeah, it looks it calls a, a system call to to fi to get what the memory is, um, but it does only look it's only looking at a particular set of functions. Um, there's a one of the arguments to it is. I mean, you can tell it whether you want to look at, uh, you know, like typical open MDAO functions or only functions relating to setup or whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it only shows you that. But if but if under underneath that it's calling out to C or whatever, you will see. Um, but again, you know, since this is Python, you have garbage collection things like that. So it's you know. It's not going to be exact. It's just kind of. It might give you clues to, you know, to what's going on. So this looks terrible because it's <laughs> the text is so big. But anyway, this gives you the kind of the breakdown in, uh, in the call tree, whatever. And these are this is the memory used in megabytes, um, and how many times the thing was called. Uh, 
Um, we have a trace function. That will also, you can tell it to, to give you the memory at each, the to, you know, the current memory at, at each uh, part of the trace. And we added that for something we were doing. So, because you wanted to see a plot of the memory versus time. But, yeah, I mean, several times we've been trying to track down memory leaks. I think it was related to that. Yeah, so, and I don't, so we have, we have a program that, or we have a script that post processes this to generate that plot, but I'm not sure where it is at the moment. Um, I'm not going to let this run all the way, but anyway, this just again, this doesn't look so great because it's so it's blown up so big. But uh, just each thing that's being called. Uh, the forward arrow is the call, and the reverse arrow is the return of each of these functions. And then each one gives you the current, the current time and the current memory uh, uh, use at that point. For now. Uh, I'm not, actually not sure that we've completely solved this issue, but in some MPI use cases, rank zero was getting way more memory used than all the other ranks. It turned out to be related specifically to how PyOps Sparse is written, where like SNOPT or whatever optimizer is only running on proc zero. And so all of a sudden it decided to allocate all its memory and it went way up. But there was a time when there was an additional memory leak on proc zero that we were trying to track down. And so we were like plotting memory usage over time for each of the different comms uh, is what we were doing to try and figure mm -hmm. out what was happening when. Um, let's see, what else? Um, so sometimes I use this tree command uh, just to give me a quick look at the structure of a model. It's not going to, it doesn't give you as much information as like the n squared or whatever, but sometimes it's good as a quick and dirty way to kind of see how things are broken down. Um, this is the propulsor. Um, so it shows you the driver, it shows you what the what the linear and nonlinear solver is at each level. It doesn't show the default ones, which are linear run once and nonlinear run once, um, just to make the atypical ones, I guess, jump out a little bit, a little bit more. Um, explicit components are are shown in blue, on black, and then the implicit components are shown in the reverse, black on blue, and then groups are in green. So. That's again probably not super useful to most users, but I, I use it uh, sometimes. Um, I guess that's. Uh, I mean, we have a couple other ones I could show, but you want to show the N two? Well, I mean, Ken's but for the propulsor specifically. So if you guys remember, huh? Oh, you are. Oh. Yeah, Ken's. Yeah, Ken will take it. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about all I've got. What questions do you guys have? Comments? Uh, go ahead. Are any draft representations available that can go above and make up memory zone in regard to the uh, in any? Some, some of that data is extractable from some of these commands. Like Brett said, we, we have some utilities that can plot some of those memory traces, but nothing that's specifically targeted toward like debugging MPI memory issues. Like I thought maybe if you had a picture and it showed some, this is where the bottleneck is because this is where the, the slope changes on the graph. We don't, we don't have anything like yeah. that. He wants, uh, his question is, can he skip using your fancy command line interface oh, and get access the, yeah, to the yeah, Python? Yeah. All, all the functions are available. Yeah, you can call them programmatically.
from yeah wherever. If you don't want to go through the command line, you can. I don't know. I don't them. think they're all collected in one place in the code, though. Yeah, they are. Uh, well, yeah, they're kind of in different places. So yeah, yeah. you'd have to dig a little bit to find it. But yeah. The easiest way to track them down is to go to om.py, which is where you know the that's where the command line stuff is, and it it has you know you can go, <laughs> have to go up from there, but. Do you think you'd find function like calling the functions directly more useful than the command line interface? Uh, okay. Mm. So you want to build this stuff in. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Good job.